Today on The Joy of Editing, Photoshop's generative fill is great, but those AI credits vanish fast. In this video, I'll show you how to save them using Topaz Photo AI. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I just want to show you how you can save on your Photoshop generative fill credits. Now every time you use Photoshop's remove tool, now if we go up to the menu bar for the remove tool, see where it says mode right here. If you click this drop down, you can click auto, may use generative AI. You could also choose generative AI on so it's always using it or you could shut off generative AI. If you use generative AI, you're generally gonna get a much better removal result. But every time you use generative AI, you will use one of your Photoshop generative fill credits. Now, every month you do get 250 credits. And as you'll note here, I have 219 of those 250 credits left. Anytime you do anything like generate an image using Firefly, you're going to use credits. If you use generative fill, you're going to use credits. If you use the remove tool in the AI mode, you will use a credit for each fill that you do. Now, depending how much you use something involving generative fill in Photoshop, you could use up quite a lot of those credits. In fact, you could run out. You can always buy more credits if needed, but when you're removing objects from your image and you need good quality removal, you can use Topaz Photo AI, which will not not cost you any credits and it'll save on your Photoshop generative credits. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you how to use Topaz Photo AI's AI object remove tool to save on your Photoshop generative credits. And the remove tool in Photo AI does not require any credits to use it. It's all done in your computer. Now today I'm just using this stock image. It's a cool shot of this lake and we have all these boats, but what if we wanted this shot without the boats and we have like this contrail in the sky and this cloud doesn't look real good. I don't like these clouds over here. There's people on the beach. I want to remove all that stuff. Now I've done that using Photoshop's AI remove tool and this is a result I've got from that. And as you can see, it's done a really good job. But what we're going to do next is send this same image into Topaz Photo AI and remove the same objects. And then we'll compare to see if these two products are very comparable. And if Topaz Photo AI is a viable option for you to save on your Photoshop generative credits. Now, for my Photoshop workflow, whenever I bring an image into Photoshop, the first thing I do is look for objects I want to remove. So I recommend that that is the first thing you do before you do the rest of your Photoshop editing. By the way, the Photoshop removal cost me 13 credits to remove all of those objects, just as a reference. By the way, this layer, Topaz Photo AI Remove Object, is a copy of the background layer. I recommend that you never take the background layer into Photo AI, make a duplicate of the background, and send that to Photo AI. And as I said, this is a stock image, so it's already been edited. But normally when I bring an image in from Lightroom into Photoshop, it has not been edited. But I do remove the objects that I don't want in the image first. Now what we need to do is come up here to Filter, Look for Topaz Labs and click on Topaz Photo AI and we will launch it and get started. And here we are inside of Topaz Photo AI. Now I'm not adding any enhancements to this image. I'm just coming right up here, right next to Super Focus Beta. You'll find Remove Object. Give that a click. That opens up this interface. And then note for settings, speed quality. There's an adjustment slider here. This is the default setting of 25. If I hover over speed quality, it says controls the amount of processing time the model will spend generating a new background. Higher quality takes more time. The amount of time depends on your hardware. On my computer, which is a relatively new computer, it's pretty fast. But I found that I get really good results at the default setting. But for this video, I'm going to drag it the whole way up to 50, which should give me the best removal quality. And I find on my computer, it's sometimes a bit faster than the Photoshop remove tool in the AI mode, which is pretty good. My quality is set for 50. Now we have a preview color. This is your brush color right there. You see, that's my brush. You have brush settings. There's a drop down. You can use the regular brush, which I use, or the object selection brush. The object selection brush 
You can just hover over an object and it'll select it. But for me, most of the time, I'm just using the regular brush. And then you can add or subtract from what you've selected. And by the way, to change the brush size, you have this slider here, or you could use your right or left bracket keys to increase or decrease the brush size. So what I'm going to do here is just paint over this area right here. These people in the boat, in this area in the water, I don't really like that. So I'm going to paint over that section right there and finish painting off the boat and the shadow down in here. And I'll go ahead and click remove. And I'll let this in real time and we'll see how long this actually takes. As you can see, it's starting to remove the object if you look down here. And so that's a pretty big selection. So it takes a little bit of time. And as I said, I am using the highest quality, so it takes a little longer. All right, and as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. Now, if you need to touch up an area, you could come here and just like say, I just want to touch that up and click remove again. And that looks better. It's done a really good job. And now I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. I'm just using the left bracket key, and I'm just going to paint over this boat right here. And I could paint over this boat as well. And let me make my brush a little bit smaller. And let's paint over this boat. Smaller again, I'll paint right here and right here. And let's click remove. I won't make you wait the whole time for this. And there it's removed those boats. And it's done a great job. Now, just like with the um, remove tool in Photoshop, you can choose to remove more than one object at once. But you need to make sure you're within a 2,000 pixel area. You get outside that area, your results may not be that great. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and paint over this boat over here. Now, if I come over to the beach on the right side and paint right here, note that I get this warning, large model input. It is recommended to keep the model input edges of the mask and padding under 2,000 pixels on the longest edge to get better results. Try removing in multiple steps, each with an input under 2,000 pixels. So you'll get that message. It'll warn you and let you know. Right here, I can undo this. I'll just do a command or control Z and get rid of that. I'll click remove and we'll remove that boat. And there it is. Next, I want to remove the people on the beach here. I'm going to start right here. This little area right here I don't like. I'm just going to paint over that area first. I'll use the left bracket key, make my brush a little smaller, and paint over this area. We'll paint right here and here, right here, over these people. I believe they are people right here. And now let's click Remove. And there is our result. It's done a really good job. Now, the next thing I want to do is get rid of this cloud up here, and then I'll get rid of the contrail next. I'll come down to the bottom right-hand side of the interface, and I'll drag this slider to the right to really zoom in on the image. Then I'll hold my space bar down. I'll get a hand tool. And what I want to do is come up to really zoom in on this area. And what we'll do now is just paint over these clouds that I don't want. I want to do that first. We'll get rid of that cloud. I'll click Remove. It's done a really good job. And now I've painted over this contrail in this little area right here. I'll click remove and see what kind of result we get. And there's our final result. I'm happy with that. On the bottom right side of the interface, if you click right here on this drop down, we could click fit. And now we can fit the screen. And there you can see what I've done so far. Now, the only last thing I want to do is make my brush a little bit larger and get rid of this cloud right here and this cloud right here. I'll click remove. And there we go. Now, if I hold down the space bar, you can see we started out here and now we end up here. So I'm really happy with this result. But you know what? I just noticed as I missed this area right down here when I was getting rid of those lines in the water. So I'm going to paint over this area right here and this area right here and fix this before I send this back into Photoshop. I'll click remove and that looks better. Now I'm still in the Remove Tool interface. I have to click Save Changes. And then I could come here and add more enhancements by clicking this plus, but I don't want to do anything else. All we need to do now is export this back to Photoshop. So we'll click this button right here. And here we are back in Photoshop. I'll shut off this Photo AI layer. Here's before and here is after, and I'm really happy with that result. Now I'll turn on the Photoshop layer underneath it. You won't see a change. I'm just going to turn it on. Now right now you're seeing the Photo AI result. Now when I shut off this layer, you will see the Photoshop removal tool result. So this is the Photoshop removal tool. Here's before it. Here's after. And now here is the Photo AI remove object result. 
As you can see, they're both very good. They look a little different, but they're both believable, and they both have done a great job. So remember, you can save on your generative fill credits in Photoshop when you need to remove objects from your image, and you need really good object removal. If you have Topaz Photo AI, send the image into Photo AI and use the AI Remove tool in Photo AI and save on those Photoshop generative fill credits. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.